I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Joe. Digital. Maserati Rick in Detroit, D. convertible bird in Miami, Miami graduated summa cum laude, strip club made a tsunami, Carlton Hines with the ball game, Rayful Edmonds with the snowflakes, Craig Pettis in the M-Town, Sal Magluta with the boat game, Falcone with the cocaine, like Freeway Ricky with the plug game, like Monster Cody in South Central, Larry Davis from Close Range. It is so good to see all of you. I hope, hope you have a wonderful holiday today. Uh, in just a few mo moments, uh, Bobby Rush is going to come up, but I want you all to know that Bobby Rush has been with me from day one. From day one, he's been a great support. Um, and the only other thing I want to say is this, is listen. I'm going to go around there and get them in a minute. you all can notice, uh, let me get it here for you. Batman Returns. Today, both the defense and prosecution made their closing arguments in a shopping cart assault trial. Police say Albert Batman Donaldson and Eric Lindsay beat and robbed Robert Crosby last year, then left him partially nude stuffed in a shopping cart. In court today, the prosecution called three witnesses to the stand. One was a DNA expert who testified that blood found on clothes inside Donaldson's house belonged to Crosby. Also on the stand, the victim, Robert Crosby. He told the jury his life has changed drastically since the attack. I can't, I can't run no more. I walk funny and I be shaking. I barely can do basic math and that's adding and subtraction. And you were in college? Yes, sir. Oh, I can't smell. You can't smell? No, I is can't that, smell at all. Is that a, as a result, a direct result of this assault upon you? I guess so, because I used to good smell. Neither Donaldson nor Lindsay has testified in their own defense. In the past, Donaldson told 16 WAPT he was New tonight, a jury has convicted him. Albert Batman Donaldson of aggravated assault. According to the Clarion Ledger, Senior Circuit Judge Tommy Green sentenced Donaldson to a maximum of 20 years in prison. Donaldson was acquitted of robbery, though. Co-defendant Eric Lindsay was found guilty of simple assault. He was sentenced to 11 months at the Hines County Penal Farm. Prosecutors said Donaldson and Lindsay beat and robbed Robert Crosby last year, then left him partially nude stuffed in a shopping cart. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy pop a lot. Mob, mob, mob ties. We on our way to Mississippi with it. Jackson to be exact. Now, y'all know I only bring y'all the real, 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 real shit, right? So, the guy that we going to be covering today is a guy by the name of Albert Batman Donaldson. And Mr. Donaldson was the alleged leader of the Wood Street Players, a very well-known gang in Jackson, from my understanding. Now, the thing that makes this story so intriguing because I know a lot of y'all watch the intro video like okay he got 20 years for assault the the thing that's gonna stand out to y'all that some of this is not even in the fact so I kind of got to get a rundown on it from my understanding it was a mayor at the time by the name of Frank Melton who was the mayor of Jackson, Mississippi, who was a crime-busting mayor, pretty much doing anything to rid the city of crime, rid the city of drugs. Now, Mr. Melton, the mayor at the time, which who held several different positions, it looked like at one time he was like, maybe like with the drug state department agency or whatever so he targets batman donaldson 
for a murder charge, or actually, I want to say it was two or three murder charges that he tried the Wood Street players for. They ended up getting acquitted from those murder charges. He had a witness that he wanted to use in that murder trial, or a star witness that he wanted the prosecution to use in that murder trial. They ended up not using him because of several different reasons. I want to say one of them was failing drug tests. So after Batman was com um, acquitted of the murders, he pretty much went on a tirade against the district attorney for not letting his witness testify. And come to find out, he was supplying the witness the whole time, funding him. The witness actually lived with the mayor at the time. A lot of people, it's a rumor in Jackson. Some people said, actually the person that brought the story to me said that it was well known that the mayor um, was possibly into drugs, taking them off the streets, re-putting them back in the streets. Um, just my doing my research on him, man, he got locked up for a strap. <laughs> They caught the nigga with a, uh, with a hidden strap and shit. So it was more than meets the eye um, with that shit. I think he ended up getting acquitted on that. But this shit is so, so, so deep. I actually seen that it was a person that was working for the county clerk's office that was fired and actually charged with obstruction of justice because the mayor or whatever uh, task force he was behind said that the Wood Street players paid her to wipe their criminal records from the state database. Man, this is your boy Popular. Ma, ma, ma. Strict tired. attorney Faye Peterson and Mayor Frank Melton occurred on Monday in Circuit Court Judge Bobby Delafter's courtroom during motions in the trial of alleged Wood Street players gang members. Last week, Peterson had filed a motion with the court to drop charges against alleged Wood Street players leader Albert Batman Donaldson for ordering the murder of Aaron Crockett on May 10, 2000. According to the motion, the primary witness in the case is tainted by interference from Melton. As head of the Mississippi Bureau of Narcotics, Melton arrested about a dozen associates of the Wood Street players in 2003 for several crimes, including the murders of Crockett. Harrison Hilliard, and Keon Berry. Melton says that Donaldson ordered all three of the murders, which are part of a complicated and brutal trail of back and forth killings believed to be turf skirmishes over the drug trade in Jackson. Crockett was shot 20 times as he sat in a car with his 13 month old son. Prosecutors argue that Donaldson wanted Crockett silenced because he was likely to testify that Donaldson had tried to kill him earlier at a nightclub. To date, though, much of the MBN evidence has not sustained guilty verdicts, and witnesses have proved unreliable, resulting in several acquittals. The district attorney declined comment on the case because it is currently on trial. However, her motion to dismiss stated that the primary witness, Christopher Smiley Walker, 23, a former associate of Donaldson in the Wood Street Players, is tainted due to improper rewards for cooperation provided to him by Melton. Attachments to the motion include an affidavit by MBN agent John Foreman stating that, while at MBN, Melton told Walker that he would appoint him to be an MBN agent and allowed him to handle weapons, although Walker was on probation. The evidence of tampering also includes a videotape of an interrogation of Walker, provided by the Drug Enforcement Administration, that shows that MBN made agreements about leniency to him that were not disclosed to Peterson. Tasha Clark states in a letter that Melton and MBN agents threatened her to get her to testify in the case. Another statement by a cousin of Walker, Marquello Stubbs, details that Melton rented him an apartment at Sunchase in Ridgeland, provided him a car, money, liquor, security codes to his home and a credit card embossed with Frankie Melton. Indeed, Melton told the JFP that he met with Peterson last week, and she told him that the trial would be more about Melton than Donaldson if she pursued it with the current evidence. The situation was, 
she didn't want to try him because the case wasn't going to be about him. It was going to be about me, Melton told the JFP. Walker, a former Wood Street player who is getting his GED and plans to get married in October, has a close relationship with Melton, which neither of them dispute. In an interview Tuesday, Walker said that Melton taught him to swim at the Farish YMCA, and he used to visit him at his old house in Madison. And, he said, Melton will help him whenever he needs it, which has included paying him to do odd jobs such as cutting his grass or washing his car. Frank ain't never paid me for nothing toward the Wood Street case, Frank done helped me when I needed help, said Walker who served 18 months for a weapons charge and was acquitted for two murders on Mobile Street in 2001. Both men say that Walker needed protection, and Melton was the only one offering it. Most recently, Walker said, his former associates have left threats on his cell phone and gotten messages to him in person. I couldn't leave this young man out there to be killed. They're going to kill Chris just like they did Aaron Crockett, Melton said. Despite the charges of tampering, Melton believes that Walker, whom he arrested with the Wood Street players and later took into his home to live in October 2003, for protection, he said, is key to the case. Here's the issue, Melton said Tuesday, Christopher, who you met the other day at my house, he is really the key witness, he could have gotten on the phone and testified that he answered the phone and gave it to Terrell. Then he overheard the argument between Terrell and Batman. Melton is referring to the call that Albert Donaldson allegedly made to his brother Terrell from the Hines County Detention Center in May 2000 to order the hit. For the week or so leading up to the trial, Melton sheltered Walker in his North Jackson home because, he said, Walker's life was in danger since he planned to testify against his Wood Street friends. On Sunday evening, Walker attended a dinner Melton prepared for several of his adoptees, Police Chief Shirlene Anderson, Assistant Chief Roy Sandifer, two bodyguards and an attorney for another member of the Wood Street Players. Two representatives of the Jackson Free Press were also present, before accompanying the mayor and police on their Sunday night rounds in the city. Donaldson supporters say that Melton has a vendetta against Donaldson, and is trying to frame and hush him by paying witnesses to testify. He's afraid of. It's something that Albert knows about Frank because Frank can't stand rejection, and he doesn't want to fool with him or deal with him, said Leela Hubbard outside the courtroom Monday. On Monday afternoon, Melton brought Walker to the court, intending to proffer him as a witness in order to convince the judge to continue the trial against Donaldson, he said. However, prosecutors showed up with another witness, Nathaniel Brent. As Melton and Walker listened from the back row, Brent, 30, testified that he has known Donaldson for 25 years after growing up on Wood Street with him. We were best friends. We would hang together every day, he told the court, while wearing a bright yellow jumpsuit. He said he had known Crockett for 15 years, but they weren't friends. Brent is currently serving life in prison for habitual arrests for drug possession and aggravated assault. He and Donaldson were imprisoned in the Hines County Jail, where he said the prisoners could get marijuana, women and cell phones whenever they wanted it, with the help of some of the guards. He said Monday that one of the deputies was affiliated with the Vice Lords and brought Brent the cell phone that Donaldson later used to order the hit on Crockett. The next day. Brent said, Donaldson confirmed to him that he had ordered the killing. As Melton leaned forward listening on the bench, elbows on knees, Brent told the court that he had written letters from jail to both Peterson and Melton telling his story right before Melton left MBN. I was going through a transition, and trying to clean out my closet, he said. During jury selection on Tuesday, defense attorneys showed concern for the role that Melton is playing from the sidelines, asking potential jurors if they were aware that Melton had planned to present witnesses against Donaldson. In April 2006, Melton lambasted Hines County District Attorney Faye Peterson because she would not put his star witness, Christopher Walker, on the stand to testify against Albert Batman Donaldson the alleged leader of the Wood Street players. 
the district attorney had to drop Walker from the witness list because the defense provided affidavits showing that Walker had long lived with Mayer. Melton had given Walker a copy of his credit card, a car, cash and other assistance. The mayor responded that he was offering Walker witness protection. Soon after Donaldson was acquitted, Melton held a press conference with Walker, during which he accused the county's first black female district attorney of having an affair with a murdered bail bondsman, an allegation that was not substantiated. Within days of that press conference, federal investigators revoked Walker's probation because he had failed nearly a dozen drug tests during the period leading up to the Donaldson trial. For more information, please follow the link below the video.